Hi everyone, welcome to the second lecture of the series Karman filter using Marla. In this lecture, we briefly review some of the important concepts from probability and statistics that are required for understanding Kalman estimates. Here is the overview. We start with the basic concepts such as probability density function, expectation, variance, etc. Then at the end of the lecture, we briefly discuss some of the important concepts from conditional probability theory. First of all, a random experiment is an experiment or a process for which the outcomes can be predicted with certainty. This means there will be multiple possible outcomes for the experiment and we cannot exactly predict which outcome that we get at each time. Examples of random experiments are tossing a coin and rolling a dice. For tossing a coin, the possible outcomes are head and tail. And at each time we repeat the experiment, we may either get a head or a tail. But we cannot exactly predict which one we will get. Similarly, for rolling a dice, the outcomes are the six faces of the dice, which are numbered from 1 to 6. So at each time when we roll a dice, we may get either one of the six outcomes. And we cannot exactly predict which one we will get. Now in this lecture series, we are not considering random experiments like this. And what we focus is on random processes or stochastic processes, which are dynamical systems with some random elements. Because of the random elements, the outcomes or the outputs of the system cannot be predicted exactly. So a random process can be considered as a random experiment, which is indexed by time instead of the trial number or the experiment number. A random experiment or process can be mathematically modeled using a probability space which contains a sample space S, an event space E, and a probability function PR. The sample space S is the set of all possible outcomes of the random experiment or process. The event space E contains the set of all events which are the set of all subsets of the sample space S. And finally, the probability function PR which assigns each event in E a real number between 0 and 1, which we call as the probability measure of the event and it denotes the chance of occurrence of that particular event. Next, we define the random variable, which is a real valued function defined on the sample space S. In practice, the outcomes of a random experiment are not always numbers, as we have seen in the case of tossing a coin. Now, using a random variable, we can assign a number to each outcome. In other words, a random variable can be used for quantifying the outcomes of a random experiment or process. Now, a group of random variables of interest can be represented using a random vector. In this lecture series, we will be mainly focusing on stochastic linear systems in which the state vector, disturbance vector, noise vector, etc. will be random vectors. Now, a probability density function which we denote by f of x is a function that assigns each random variable a number between 0 and 1. So basically, the PDF f is a mapping from the set R to the closed interval 0 to 1. Similarly, for a random vector x, the PDF f is a mapping from the set Rn to the closed interval 0 to 1. So basically, it assigns each random vector in Rn to a value between 0 and 1. Now, for continuous random variables, the PDF is used to specify the probability of the random variable to take a value within an interval. This can be represented as in equation number 1. So here, probability of the random variable x to take a value between a and b is equivalent to integral of the probability density function from a to b. So this basically means the probability of the random variable x to take a value between a and b is equal to area under the graph of the PDF from x equal to a to x equal to b. Similarly, for discrete random variables, the PDF, which is known by the name probability mass function or PMO, is used to specify the probability of the random variable to take a particular value. So here, probability of x take a value a is equal to f of a. Now, for a random variable x with PDF f of x, the expectation or mean value is a parameter that indicates the average value and is defined as in equation number 3. So here the integration is for continuous random variables and summation is for discrete random variables. 
we have to do the summation for all possible values of the random variable. Similarly, for a random vector x, the expectation will be a vector. It will be denoted by E of x and it contains the expected value of each of the element of the random vector as its element. Now for a random variable x, the variance is defined as in equation number 5, which indicates the measure of spread or average deviation from the mean. Here, x minus e of x denotes the deviation of the random variable from its mean. Then, the variance of the random variable will represent the expected value of the squared deviation of the random variable from its mean. So, if the variance is less, then it means the random variable is more centered around its mean. In other words, the randomness in the variable is less. Similarly, for the random vector x, the variance is defined as in equation number 6 which will be an n by n square matrix and it is known by the names variance matrix, covariance matrix, variance covariance matrix, dispersion matrix, etc. Now, the dependence between two random variables can be characterized by a parameter called covariance, which is actually a generalization of the variance. Here, for the random variables x and y, the covariance is defined as in equation number 7. Similarly, for random vectors x and y, the covariance matrix can be defined as an equation number 8, which will be an n by p matrix. Here, if we replace y by x, we get the expression for the variance. So, v of x comma x equal to v of x, which will be an n by n square matrix. Now, the covariance of x comma y will be a zero matrix if the random vectors x and y are independent. This is an important property which we will be using in upcoming lectures. Now, let's discuss the basic idea of an important class of estimator called MMSC estimator. We have the estimator error vector XEK will be the difference between the actual state and the estimated state. From this, we can define the mean square error or the MSC which gives the expected value of the squared error. This will be equal to the expected value of the XEK transpose XEK, where XEK is the error vector. So we have XEK transpose XEK will be equal to trace of XEK into XEK transpose. This is because XEK into XEK transpose will be an n by n matrix for which the diagonal elements will be XEK 1 square, XEK 2 square, and XEK n square. Now trace of a matrix will be the sum of its diagonal elements. So trace of XEK into XEK transpose will be equal to this value. Now this will be equal to trace of expected value of XEK into XEK transpose and we have expected value of XEK into XEK transpose will be equal to the variance of XEK. So the mean square error will be equal to the trace of the variance of XEK. Now in the MMSC estimator, we compute an estimate of the state XK that result in minimal mean square error. The Kalman estimators comes under the class of MMSC estimators and we use this approach for the derivation of the Kalman estimators which we will discuss in detail in the upcoming lectures. One of the important class of random variables is the Gaussian random variable which are characterized by the Gaussian or normal probability density function and it is defined as in equation number 11. Here the PDF is an exponential function of the random variable with the expected value and the variance as its parameters. Graphically, a Gaussian distribution can be represented like this, which takes a bell-shaped curve. Now in Gaussian distribution, if we substitute x equal to e of x, this terms will become 0 and we get f of x equal to 1 by root 2 pi v of x. So for x equal to e of x, we get f of x equal to 1 by root 2 pi v of x, which will be the peak value of the Gaussian distribution. Similarly, for x equal to e of x plus or minus root v x, these terms will become v of x and these two terms will cancel and we get f of x equal to 1 by root 2 pi v of x into e raised to minus 1 by 2. Therefore, for x equal to e of x plus root v of x and x equal to e of x minus root v of x, we get f of x equal to 1 by root 2 pi e v of x. Here, root v x is the square root of the variance, which we call as the standard deviation. So here we can see that when x equal to e of x, 
the PDF will take the maximum value, which will be 1 by root 2 pi E of s. And when x is changed from E of s by one standard deviation, the PDF will reduce by 1 by root E times of the peak value. So here we can see that the peak value of the PDF depends on the variance. And as the variance increases, the peak value will decreases. And also this interval becomes large. This basically means the randomness in X will increases. This situation is illustrated in figure 1b in which we have considered three random variables x, y and z with Gaussian distributions in such a way that v of x less than v of y less than v of z. So here x has the minimum variance and z has the maximum variance. And in the figure we can see that x has an R over distribution with the maximum peak value among the three and z has a wider distribution with the minimum peak value. So basically we can say that as the variance decreases, the distribution becomes narrower. This means the randomness of the variable decreases. Now let x be a random variable with the Gaussian PDF f of x. Then we have these results as shown in question number 12. The first result basically means that if we integrate the PDF from x equal to e of x minus root v of x to x equal to e of x plus root v of x, we get 0.68. Similarly, if we integrate it from e of x minus 2 root v of x to e of x plus 2 root v of x, we get the value 0.95. And finally, if we integrate the PDF over all the values of x, in other words, from minus infinity to plus infinity, we get 1. Here, the third result holds for all PDFs, whereas the first two are for Gaussian PDF. Verifying these equations analytically will be difficult, but we can easily verify it numerically by considering the graph of the Gaussian PDF as shown in figure 2a and then integrate it from x equal to e of x minus root v of x to x equal to e of x plus root v of x. This basically gives the area of this shaded region and this will be equal to 0.68. Now let's discuss what is the meaning of this value 0.68. This value basically means that around 68 percentage of times the value of the random variable will be in this interval. In other words, if you take the value of the random variable 10 times, around 7 times it will be within this interval. Now let's consider two different examples. The first one is a Gaussian random variable with mean 0 and variance 1 for which the graph is shown in figure 2b. Here root v of x equals 1. Hence, the interval will be from minus 1 to plus 1. So, here we can say that if we take the value of the random variable 10 times, around 7 times it will be between minus 1 and plus 1. Now, in the second example, we consider a random variable with mean 0 and variance 4 for which the graph is shown in figure 2c. Here, root of vx equal to 2. Hence, around 7 times out of 10, the random variable takes the value between minus 2 and plus 2. This clearly shows that if the variance is more, then the random variable will be more spread in nature and if the variance is less, then the random variable is more centered around its mean. This explains the significance of minimum variance estimate. Next, we generalize the Gaussian distribution for the multivariable case and for the random vector x, the multivariate Gaussian distribution or the Jovian Gaussian distribution can be defined using the probability density function as given in equation number 30, which is a generalization of the univariate PDF to the n dimensional case. And for two random variables, x and y, you can have the Jovian Gaussian distribution as in figure 3. Or in the case of a two dimensional random vector, x with elements x1 or x2, the Jovian Gaussian distribution will be like this. Now, for multivariate distributions, one important concept is the conditional probability. Let x and y be two random variables, then the conditional PDF, which is represented as f of x given y, denotes the probability of x given the value of y. For example, f of x given y equal to a gives the probability of x given that y takes the value a. 
Now for the random variables x and y, the conditional expectation is given by equation 40, which gives the weighted average of the random variable with respect to its conditional probability. Similarly, for the random vectors x and y, the conditional expectation is given by equation 15, which will be a vector that contains the conditional expectation of each element of the random vector x given the value of the random vector y. Figure 4 shows the graphical representation of the conditional probability. So here we have the random variable x along the x axis and the random variable y along the y axis and the joint PDF f of x y is along the z axis. Now if you take a particular value of y, let's say y equal to a, then the graph of the conditional PDF f of x given y equal to a is obtained by taking the intersection of the graph of the joint PDF with the plane y equal to a. So in this figure we can see that the conditional PDF f of x given y is also a Gaussian distribution. So we have this general property for jointly Gaussian random variables x and y the conditional distribution f of x given y equal to a is also Gaussian. Here we can also see that when a moves in this direction the height of the conditional PDF decreases and the PDF will become wider. So this basically means the variance of the PDF increases. So we can see that when a equal to e of y, the height of the conditional PDF f of x given y equal to a will be the maximum and the variance will be minimum. And when a moves from e of y in both direction, the height of the conditional PDF will decreases and the width will increases. Next, we derive an expression for the conditional expectation and variance. For that, we use the independent property. We have if the random variables x and y are independent, then the conditional expectation e of x given y is equal to e of x. Now, we introduce a variable z, which is defined as x minus l y, where l is some gain matrix which we choose like this. Then, this will result in the covariance matrix v of z, y will be equal to the zero matrix. So this basically means the variables z and y are independent. So here the selection of the gain matrix L is the significant part which makes the covariance matrix P of z, y to 0 and thereby makes z and y independent. Now using this we can compute the conditional expectation E of x given y so which is equal to E of z plus L y given y since from this equation we have x equal to z plus L y. So this is equal to E of z given y plus E of L y given y. So we have E of z given y is equal to E of z since z and y are independent. Now using this we can simplify the expression to E of x plus L into y minus E of y. And by substituting for L we get the final expression like this. Similarly an expression for the conditional variance can be obtained as in equation number 18. So here the selection of L is the significant part which results in the conditional expectation E of x given y with minimum mean square error. So in the Kalman estimated derivations we will be using this conditional probability approach also and this will be discussed in further in the upcoming lectures. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.